Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name's Jason Newland and this is Art Me Bore You to Sleep Please only listen when you can safely be bored to sleep And only listen when you can safely close your eyes Before I progress just like to say thank you to Kiri and for your PayPal gift and Merry Christmas to you and if you would like to if you'd like to if you'd like to send me a PayPal gift ooh, the link PayPal um, link is on my website there's also the link is paypal.me forward slash jason and new land oh, I'm still in the process of uh, getting my website sorted see I've got Every time I do a new recording, it's always up, you know, uploaded and updated. But the what I've been doing is adding links, like information. So you got links to the different podcast hosts, so you can watch it there. For example, Spotify, Spreaker, uh, Apple Podcast. Stitcher cast box you know places like that so I'm kind of updating each one as I'm going so, as I'm or every day so it's taking quite a while because it's a bit monotonous to do <laughs> um, but I'm getting there I've nearly done all of the let me bore you to sleep ones on my website and then I've got all the deep sleep whisper ones all the sleep hypnosis weekly ones and then all of the relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety, panic attacks so I should have them all done by Christmas because it's the 21st of December today 2019 uh, so I should have it, yeah, I should have it all done by Christmas. I just, I can't spend too much time doing it because it's just so boring. It, I just, I want to go to sleep when I'm doing it. It's, it's just so unstimulating. It really, it's just like, oh, my lovely squeaky chair. It's, it's literally just cut and paste and then copy the tile of the recording and then put it in and paste it in each individual one line and just I've not I've not done it justice to how boring it is in fact if I went through the process with you and talked you through an hour of me doing it I think I would still be more bored than you were listening to it seriously it's really tedious but it's something that I've it's something that I need to do it's it's good for the SEO SEO SEA SEO uh, search engine to find my stuff as well because really at the moment my website in its current form is just there for people that already know about it people that are already listening to me I mean, that's only a small percentage of what a website is kind of supposed to be for. It, you know, it's supposed to be, in my understanding, you know, at least 80% to, to get new people, to find new, to let new people know about what I do. Or maybe 90% even. Um, especially as I'm not selling anything. So, you know, it's kind of, 
Now I might, I might, I might have people find me online through the website, but I think it's. Well, I don't really know where people find me. I think a people, I don't know. On podcasts, I suppose. You know, on the podcast hosts, on Spotify, people putting in boring or sleep, insomnia, or maybe putting in my name. Um, Yeah. So what I did, because of Spotify's uh, shutting down some of the podcasts that are no longer in use, and I was getting messages from my listeners some some listeners saying your Spotify page is gone where's your stuff gone but um, the the ones that I've been using since it's about 21st of November 2018 they're still running they're still up and running it's the ones before that that I had had and then I deleted them I deleted the podcasts but I'd moved them to a different provider that makes sense a, a different account and so all my things are still online it's just uh, sometimes knowing where to look which shouldn't it shouldn't be like that I don't think it shouldn't be it's not supposed to be complicated for anybody it's so I kind of try to make it as simple as possible because in all fairness when I look for stuff I have to search quite hard sometimes I go on Spotify I was like okay I do find the stuff fairly easily but some of it is kind of a little bit hidden and so I found those links for the various different podcasts and I put them onto the website so if you for any reason you get to a point where you can't find one of my podcasts um, then just go to my website look up just and just go click on whichever so you go onto the website click on the let me bore you to sleep for example or the deep sleep whisper click on that that link and then it'll open up and you'll have all of the recordings that I've made 171 or whatever for that to deep sleep whisper hypnosis and then you can just click on that and it'll any of the recordings will eventually will have a link underneath to all the different podcasts that have it on as well as you can stream it on that page free and you can also download it free as well so everything really is on my website but I'm, and I know that some people prefer the podcasts themselves but I do upload everything I do update everything now that I do on my websites on my website and when you use it on the on the phone you know, a smartphone, it's, it works fine, it's, I mean, the first page, the home page, when you go on there, is, it's got a, a player on there with all the latest recordings that I've made, so you can always be updated, as soon as I make a new recording, it's on the website, even before I've even made a special page for it, because it's on that player. Now, if you hear anything more boring over the next week, you let me know, because that was boring. I was like, ah, oh, information. I mean, what's next? I'm going to start showing you uh, pictures of holidays that I've been on. Here's a wedding I went to. Here's a picture. Here's, here's uh, Aaron. He's married to Sean. And, yeah, you don't know either of those. And next to them, it's Stevie, who's married to Steve, 
it's quite we laugh about that because they've got very similar names you don't know those either let me tell you about a bit more about them because i know you don't know them but yeah they went traveling to canada and had a really good time and they weren't actually together at the time they're just friends and they they got caught uh, they got stuck in a an airport because there was delays due to snow and they I think Steve, Stevie said she she looked over at Steve uh, while they were sleeping on the benches in the airport and fell in love and knew that you know but they were supposed to be together forever here's a picture of a cactus from uh Phoenix, uh, it's really nice, and uh, yeah, next to that, it's, it's a man called Manuel. Now, he was actually looking after the car at the time because we had problems with the car, and he was fixing it because it had some some kind of engine problems and stuff. But it was very nice, and we had a we had a meal with him and his family. And they, what was really amazing is they had this big, massive TV, and the quality of the picture was really great. And it was really weird because on the TV screen, they had the A Team, the old TV show. I hadn't seen the A Team for absolutely years. And I remember watching it and thinking, wow, I haven't seen this for absolutely years. And um, Manuel said, I, I saw it yesterday. I said, what, it's not the same episode? He said, no, no, it's on every day. Different episodes, um, but they just show it. It's, it's uh, repeats. I said, you want me to repeat? He said, no, no, it's repeats. They, it's, they, they, they repeat programs. I said, oh, I didn't know they did that. He said, but you, what do you mean you didn't know they did that? I said, I don't, didn't know that TV shows were repeated. He said, well, you see, you've never seen the same television show more than once, the same episode more than once. I said, yeah. Well, it's a repeat then, isn't it? I said, I don't know. Well, what did you think it was? I don't know, I thought maybe they just reenacted it. You know, the, the episode was so popular, they just reshot another another version. Because, uh, yeah. Anyone for more dessert? Oh, yeah, lovely. So, yeah, I don't, I, you know, it's boring. I don't want to... Oh, God, can, can you imagine... Yeah, we've just been a lovely holiday. Thing is, you've got, to, you've got to ask people how their holidays were. Just out of human kindness. <laughs> Do you have a nice holiday? Good. Don't need any more information. <laughs> Don't, that's it, that's it. Just, was it good? There's a lot of, I just want to know that you're happy. That's it. It's just you're happy, you had a good time. You got back safely. and Brilliant. That's great. And... Um, you know why people say that? I said, did you... Did you get back safely? Did you have a safe flight back? No, no, no. He crashed into a mountain. You're just like, yeah, I'm here. Of course it was a safe flight back. Oh, a bit of sarcasm there. I don't know, I was, I was just showing some caring and kindness. Like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Where's your Christmas spirit? My Christmas spirit is in 1984. <laughs> that's where it was. 1984. That's where it's. That's where it's been. Oh, that's a bit harsh. Yeah, I know. So Christmas. Let's talk about Christmas. Yeah. Let's talk about Christmas. Now, without getting heavy, Christmas isn't for everybody. You know, they say you know. You get a puppy, it's not just for Christmas. Well, Christmas isn't just for Christmas. It's, well, it is, but 
yeah, that doesn't make sense, does it? I I do feel a bit for people that don't celebrate this particular festival because it's really forced upon people. Uh, you know, it's actually in. It depends where you where you live in. I mean, if you if you're living in India or China, it might not be. I don't even know if. Um, some countries probably don't even recognise Christmas. I honestly don't know. Um, I don't care enough to, to actually research it. But in this country, where I've kind of been born and lived, it's almost uh, celebrating Christmas is like learning the language. It's ingrained. It's 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 like a social. You ha- sociably, sociably, socially, has to be done. Kind of, if you don't do it, it's almost like you're antisocial. And it's got to be weird because, you know, let's say 50 years ago, this was a Christian country. It was classed as a Christian country. And the Queen. When they, if you if you listen to the Queen, um, and when they opened Parliament, because they just had an election, and the Queen, they still talk about um, the church and oh, um, so I'm watching boxing, but it's on silent. And I've got no idea who's actually fighting. Thing is, I put the fight. I put this on, yeah, because there's a couple of fights before the big one, and they normally last about a half an hour each. Well, the last two fights, this one that's happening now, and the one just gone, have been both knockouts in the first round. Just since I started talking, in the last seventeen minutes. So the actual, <laughs> the actual main fight it could start long before I expected it to, which isn't ideal. So I'm not quite sure if if it does start, I'm just going to have to. Uh, stop the recording, I think. Oh, so yeah, what was I saying? Um, Christmas is a very it's an unusual time. Yeah, so fifty years ago, everybody, I say everybody, but you know, pretty much, as far as I understand, fifty years, sixty, seventy, eighty years, Christmas, everyone celebrated Christmas. Um. Not everybody could afford to celebrate Christmas, I suppose, as, as it is today, but probably less so then. Um, but it's as we've sort of grown, well, grown, as we've grown in quantity of people and with various different beliefs throughout the years, there's a huge amount of people that don't perhaps celebrate Christmas and you see that a lot in London because there's so many shops open in London on Christmas Day Uh, there's taxi drivers working Christmas Day because then then it's a different it's not it's not an important day to them because not to them but to some people because they've got a different faith so they'll Christmas Day to to some people just another day. It's another just an ordinary day, and I actually used to really appreciate that when I lived in London, because having lived in a small town, I now live in a small village. But when I was 
between the ages of seven and sort of 19, I lived in a uh, little town and it, everything was closed, Christmas day, Boxing Day, pretty much, you know. I think things are changing a little bit with garages, you know, petrol stations selling stuff and, but generally um, everything was closed. But in London, when I moved to London when I was 19, I was so happy <laughs> to see that a lot of, because I lived in East London, and there's a lot of non-Christmas celebrators. I don't know what, how to how to resent the word, but different people. Some people don't celebrate it, and they'd have their businesses open, whether it was um, paper shop, you know, news agents, off licenses, or other things, garages petrol you know to get petrol and um, maybe even takeaways you know places so it's, it's not like the, the entire place would be open none of the big supermarkets would be open but there's plenty of smaller uh, shops convenience stores that were open and they'd be open all the, like practically all the time which was brilliant because that is convenience so I think if a, if, a sh if a shop charges more money, it calls itself a convenience store, but it charges more money than like if you go to the supermarket, but it's only open at uh, the same times as a the supermarket, then that's not convenient. You know, the idea for me, convenience would be pretty much 24 hours a day though not many shops well none around here do um, there isn't I think as as Asda yeah I think Asda's open 24 hours a day and but that's like miles away it'd be so lovely to near to I can't even get the words out be lovely to near live a big supermarket. I don't think I appreciated it when I lived near a big supermarket, and now I don't live near a big supermarket. I'm um, not so much uh, fun. Because well, I live some, but I, I I live near a big field, or quite a few big fields, but nothing else. Apparently, there used to be on my estate where I live. There used to be a like a happy shopper. And contrary to the name, it sounds nice, but it's just a basically a uh, little shop that sells uh, probably more expensive stuff than what you'd get in a supermarket. But it's convenient because it's literally, you know, on your road or a five minute walk. That's convenience as well to me Ooh, but apparently it closed down because there's too much shoplifting <laughs> seriously that's why right. and the person was the person that told me was one of the people what did she say and um, closed down because there's too much shoplifting yeah and she said she missed going in there because she missed shoplifting. <laughs> That's what she used to go in there to shoplift, and then she, she was annoyed because it closed down. 
because of the shock because of the shoplifting ah so we'd still have a shop would we if it weren't for you just you no one else just you she said no it wasn't just me it was the whole family <laughs> it, was, it was everyone on the estate apparently like everybody all the kids on the estate this is when she was a kid all the children on the estate basically just it's probably not true but they they just took turns stealing and eventually the shopkeeper looked at the till looked at the shelves looked back into their till looked at the shelves that were very empty looked in the till that was also empty ah. now there's something wrong with this picture and uh, they closed and now it's a house the only thing we've got around here is a garage which is probably about a 10 minute walk so it's not now probably 15 maybe 10 I don't know 10 minute walk 12 minutes so it's not a long distance but they're not like great in there I mean technically if you look in there it looks like it's got quite a lot of stuff and they've got fridges full of beers and uh, cans like uh, coke and uh, fizzy drinks and but they sell bread but they don't sell any butter or margarine they they start selling fruit how's that going to help me <laughs> I'm so angry when it comes to fruit <sighs> I do like bananas so it does have a cash machine it does have oh they sell sandwiches in there sandwiches which they're okay you know it's um Jane what's this Jimmy James not James Corbin Uh, James not James DeGale James not James Bond Jane, Jamie Oliver Jamie Oliver does uh, he actually he makes the sandwiches himself and I've never seen him be delivered but I guess because he's so famous he they, you know he lives them like quietly so that no one sort of sees him but the um, the garage can you believe this right they get a delivery of sandwiches and they actually close the garage this is the petrol station they close it for about an hour to stock up the sandwiches you know to take the delivery I guess check the delivery sign for it or whatever and then to stock the fridge up with sandwiches so they close they put bollards you know those orange things that you put down in the road and to prevent anyone driving onto the petrol station forecourt and spending money or oh, we don't want to I wouldn't want any old my, my customers oh I don't want them spending money and they do that you know every day of the week pretty much so even if they're not open even if they don't close for a whole hour it's got to be a good 40 minutes 45 minutes let's say just half an hour just you know so it's half an hour one two three so three hours a week they close the garage the petrol station and you know when it is it's usually between five and six now in my estimation that's peak time travel that's a peak time when people are going to want to 
get petrol on the way home from work or maybe get some beers get some wine get some cigarettes or get some you know something some sandwiches maybe on the way home as well as petrol of course and they close it now I shouldn't really be concerned about other people's businesses and stuff because you know literally in this case this is none of my business it's not my business but this person who owns that garage who because is yeah, I, don't, I think you franchise you don't actually own them you franchise them but apparently he's got quite a few garages petrol stations so he's a very rich man well I think it's, a, it's a, I've been told little bits I think they're brothers or something but they're very rich because one petrol station is enough to make you wealthy but to have like 15 or whatever you know these these are rich these are multi-millionaires and I kind of found out roughly how much they're taking every week as well each one so there's a lot of money coming in so if each one of those garages 15 garages closes for half an hour every day that's let's say seven hours a day lost petrol they're losing thousands of pounds every day I worked it out I actually did work it out that they're potentially losing about a million pound a year based on it being peak time how much petrol it gets sold in an hour I don't know what the profit margin is but between the 15 you're looking at least 20 grand a week which is a million a year okay I that I might be way off but I might be way under as well it might be more like 2 million a year that they're losing so I just wonder like why not just employ someone part time you know get 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 me to be this is the, the best thing they could do yeah is I would say to them listen give me if you're losing two million a year, just just give me a million a year just that I'll save you a million a year and I'll collect the sandwiches and I'll deliver them and put them in the fridge myself each individual garage whatever time of the day you want them delivered we'll get them done and I'll just get a few few vans a few people to help out and you know or just do it all with just a couple of people save them an absolute fortune and you know what I can't imagine the amount of money they make from those sandwiches covers the cost of being closed for those seven hours a week seven hours a week yeah three seven no one two three three hours times by ten that's thirty hours forty five hours that's forty five hours a week did I say seven hours a week no it's good work out about forty five hours a week between 15 petrol stations so 
That's a heck of a lot of petrol. Can you imagine? You just get one petrol station and you close it for 45 hours. How much money? So is that 24, 48? Just nearly two solid days, two whole days, day and night. So if you said to them, well, we get the sandwiches, we're going to give them to you free, completely free, and all you all you got to do is just close one of your garages for 48 hours, once a week for 48 hours. I don't think any one of the petrol stations would... I don't think they'd say, yeah, oh yeah, that's a good idea. No, they can't be making a lot of money from the sandwiches. Even with 15 carriages. You're going to make a few grand. But not, not, not going to cover the amount they've lost. I should be an economical advisor. Hmm. Oh, I'm tired. Oh. It's been raining every day. So, for my reckoning, we've only got about 30 days and 30 nights left of raining and we'll be able to get out of the ark I can't imagine the mess that have been all those animals together yesterday I was going to walk through the park to get the bus I've been trying to get stocked up with some stuff. I needed some uh, sanitary bits and I nearly said sanitary towels, but no, sanit. You know, um, just bits for the bathroom and that, and a little bit of food. So I'm trying to get stocked up as much as possible. Although I bought these baguettes. You know the baguettes that you can put in the oven that are they're half cooked so you put them in the oven for like half I don't know five minutes or something and then or ten minutes and they're they're ready well they were they had them on special offer and I saw them, I thought I got a couple over the last couple of weeks. And I thought, I'm going to check the date, the expiry date on them things, because they seem to last forever. And I did. And I went into the to the shop today, and the expiry date was March next year. And they were, they were only 50 pence a pack, and there was four rolls in each pack. And I generally only eat one roll per time. So I bought 10 packs for £5. So that's literally 40 meals. Or 40 snacks, you know, however you want to look at it. For £5. Can't argue with that. And of course I need to have something to put into it but you know it's probably just cheese or something like that oh. the good thing about it you could put it in the oven it's very crispy and stuff it's lovely or what I like to do is I've got a Breville toaster um, sandwich toaster thing and it works perfectly. Put a bit of uh, margarine on one one of the slices. 
put cheese on top and then put the other you've got to, got to cut it open first obviously but and then put the other top on on it move it into the middle so it's not two slices of bread but just in the middle of the the thing and just pull it down you've got to push it really down hard but it comes up a treat it's a really nice it's almost kind of like ciabatta a bit ciabatta y re e re Ooh. Oh, yeah. remember to uh, if you're still listening remember to go to my website go to the review page and leave a video review because I actually like reading them it's really nice it's really nice but I was in the park <sighs> on the way to the um, bus stop and it was it was waterlogged it was literally flooded the park the where the pavement was flooded and I thought what what's going on and basically what it is is the I don't think I've ever known it to be flooded like that before the grass gets flooded sometimes in the winter but I've only seen it get flooded on one side and you just can't walk through it literally it's because it's not even ground so you end up sinking and stuff so I don't obviously I don't walk through it but it actually and there was sinking ground on the other side as well which was also flooded and it was flooded so much that the entire part of that pathway was flooded it was enough to not be able to walk through it I would have got up, probably up to my ankles in water that's how much it's been raining and the day before yesterday I, I didn't go out at all so it's a little bit oh, I'm not surprised but <laughs> it wasn't like that the previous day so I ended up walking around the edges of the field trying to find my way and my steps so that I didn't end up sinking and in the end I did, I did I found a way around it was it took me about five minutes to get through I was like wow so when I got home when I came back on the bus because uh, I generally always come back I I stopped at an earlier bus stop and I, fat, I found my way walking around the long way round via the road because I just wouldn't get through. I thought I'm not, I'm not doing that. Plus, I think you know, it wasn't dark by then because it was about two, two fifty in the afternoon, so I hadn't quite got dark yet. But. Apparently, around the corner, all the roads are flooded as well because it's all farmland, and the there's these ditches either side of the road, well, no, one side of the road, rather, and the ditch goes all the way along the road, all the way around yeah for quite a long time and when it gets to a certain height it just overflows and then it completely fills the road it happens every year but we've had a considerable downpour 
over the last week or so, maybe 10 days, I don't know exactly. And it's quite weird. When I say flooding, not, not flooding in a, uh, a terrible way that some people experience, but in a, in a way that's more inconveniencing, uh, you, in a way you can't walk through it, but you could probably if you had Wellington boots on. Um, you know, a bit like Paddington Bear, those kind of boots. They don't have to be green or blue. It could be any colour really, I suppose. Pink even. I like pink. I went through a period years ago when I was younger. It was actually it was just as I was starting doing this. It was in 2006 and I went through a period I think the period started in about 2004 actually but yeah I went through a period when I was wearing a lot of very light uh, colourful clothes I'd be wearing like white trousers and that's before I'd, you know, I mean I'd never had gastroenteritis before and um, since I since I had gastroenteritis in January I don't think I'd ever wear white trousers <laughs> this that's a no-no just in case but I was yeah I wore white trousers pink t-shirts and for some reason, I felt quite comfortable in myself. And I wasn't... Um, I wasn't skinny. I wasn't, you know... I was, but I just almost... felt fairly good about, you know, how I was. I was a lot slimmer than I am now, though. I was... A lot lighter. I think back then I was about thirty. I don't know, twelve and a half or thirteen and a probably about thirteen and a half stone. Maybe thirteen stone. Oh, I forget, but I'm heavier than that. Yeah, I'm probably about two stone heavier than I was back then. Although I think I carry it fairly well, um, mainly on my stomach, and um, my tummy. <sighs> well, where the war? I used to get a lot of my um, tr trousers so much, but just clothes from River Island and Gap. So I was probably, possibly too old to be buying clothes from there because I was, what, 35 then, but I don't know, it felt, felt okay. I was working. And yeah, well, that was boring. God, please tell me more about your clothes shopping in two thousand and six. Oh, I haven't heard it. I need to hear more. Uh, perhaps you can tell us about your shoes. <laughs> what about the winter? Did you have gloves? A scarf. What about a winter coat? And this what about a what about a summer coat? A summer jacket. Yeah, I've had lots of different things. I've uh I had this jacket that I wore for a couple of years that I got when I was in Ireland. 
1994 and I wasn't there that long but Andre, the original Andre, he his sister was married to I can't even remember his name but anyway he gave me a jacket to wear It gave me a cool, cool jacket. So, I brought it back with me. And, well, I wore it back. I didn't just bring it back. I, I had it, you know. And it wasn't glued to me, but I had it, you know, um, on the outside of my body. Just like, I wore it like a jacket because it was a jacket, and I quite liked it because it reminded me of my time in Ireland, I suppose. So I used to wear it for well over a year. So I got back, I was back before Christmas 94, and I was still wearing it at Christmas 95, because Christmas 95, let me tell you about this, the, it's really mild weather. Temperature wise, I was still walking around in a little jacket in you know Christmas, and you know, it's that's unusual. I mean, you know, Tom Jones like likes to sing. It's not unusual. Well, that was unusual. Because even in um, London, where the temperatures are generally not as cold as other places, it seems possibly more to do with the amount of heat that's created from millions and millions of people living in such close quarters and all those we think about it all those millions of bodies like 10 million people all in a the size of a like a town that would normally fit maybe 300,000 you know it's it's kind of it's going to generate a lot of heat isn't it I mean I remember the last time I had kind of like had a girlfriend and she was more almost uh, the heat that was coming off of her because I'm not used to sort of being in bed with anyone else I used to be apart from Andre and I literally I was just so hot and it was just a shock to the system I mean I have had girlfriends before and I know that the heat is not, it wasn't to do with her, it's just a human thing, isn't it? We let off heat. But I've forgotten how, I just think the amount of money I'd save on the heating, you know, on the gas heating, by having her regularly there. It would just save me so much money. Wouldn't need a heater. Wouldn't even need the heating on. She generated that much heat, or maybe I was generating that much heat, or maybe together we were generating that much heat. But this was September, I think. So it wasn't really 
yeah it wasn't winter so maybe it was a fairly warmish evening anyway yeah it was nice though even though I'm moaning it was nice What other things are I get in the shop today? Oh, I've got some tea cakes, boxes of uh, Smarties. And then two days ago I went into town and I got another delivery. Previous to that I got delivery on Friday as well. So I'm just getting stocked up with things that are required. I make sure I've got enough food for Andre. Make sure I've got enough uh, sponge puddings for Christmas. And you know the freezers are pretty full as well. So I've got enough food and stuff to keep me going till after Christmas. So apart from milk, I'm not really needing much else, which is pretty, pretty groovy. Yeah, pretty, pretty. Groovy indeed. <sighs> so I'm hoping that it's not raining tomorrow or they want to get up later because I need to possibly get a few more bits from the shops but outside of that I'm just going to relax for the next few days and that should be okay Yeah. Andre's been a bit naughty lately. I mean, he's good as gold when he's asleep, and he sleeps for a long time. But when he's awake, he really is awake. There's no half measures with him. Either he's completely plonked out completely unconscious or he's causing trouble I don't know I don't know who he takes after because I'm not like that oh this chair is so squeaky he's so squeaky man so blimmin' squeaky. Squeaky, 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 McSqueaky. Winnie, 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 winnie. Wanna, 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 wanna. Not one of those days where I need to eat, but I'm not hungry. But I am hungry, but I can't be bothered to do anything. And all I need to do is walk into the kitchen, stick a ready-made meal in the microwave for 11 minutes, and that's it. Oh, it's just all that effort. <laughs> but I need to eat. Yes, I do really need to eat. 
And if I don't eat soon, I'll have to eat later. So yeah. Da -da -da. Here we come, walking down the street. Everyone we meet. Hey, hey, with the monkeys. People say we're monkeying around, but we are too busy singing to put anybody down. We're just trying to be friendly. Won't you come watch us singing? Play. We're the young generation. We've got something to say. She's a wonderful lady, and she's mine, all mine. And that doesn't seem to be a way you'll come and lose my mind. It's not easy playing songs with a girl in yellow dress. Been a long time since the party, and the room is in a mess. Me, me, me. I don't know the words to that. Why don't you put on me? Why don't you set me free? Why don't you do what I do? Know what I say when I be? Oh, if I fly like the wind of the bluebird as she sings. The six o'clock alarm would never ring, but it rings, and I rise while I sleep. Oh my eyes, shivering ways up as it is. yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.